Welcome to the True Centrist Podcast, a podcast where four of this generation's greatest minds discuss various pop culture media, from video game fantasy to sci-fi TV shows, and analyze these fictional scenarios from our four unique perspectives. We then collaborate to reach a compromise on how said fictional scenario should have gone, or to land on alternative interpretations. Uh, demonstrating compromise between four of the world's greatest minds is key to solving all polarization in societies everywhere, forever. Now introducing your host, I'm Wormy. I am Noku. Seven. I am Blangus. And on today's episode, we will be discussing episode 10, season 2 of Star Trek Deep Space Nine Sanctuary, where a family comes through the wormhole and they're very anxious to let the crew know that their people are facing a big problem. On the other side of the wormhole, these people were persecuted, oppressed by another race for a few centuries, and then exiled from their own home to search for another place to live. They're refugees, essentially. When they come through the wormhole, it's, uh, they are first unable to communicate with the people of Deep Space Nine, when the computer finally translates them, they tell them what's going on. They are looking for a new home, and according to their beliefs, the home that they are going to find will be a world broken, filled with sorrow, and they're supposed to come to it to make that place better. They see Bajor recently... Uh, they see Bajor recovering from the Cardassian occupation, and they believe this is that broken world that they are to come to to make better. In the episode, unfortunately, the Bajorians turn them away. And that's essentially what we're discussing. What would we do about the Skrians, the, the people who came through the wormhole, who want to settle on Bajor? Alrighty. So I'll, uh, I'll start with my, my perspective on the matter. So, um, obviously, neither the Federation nor the Bajorans have any obligation to help the Skrians. As a matter of fact, the Skrians should be sent back through the wormhole. Um, you can't really take them on to the station. Uh, they mentioned in the episode that the reason they were able to get free was, like, the minions attacked their oppressors. So there's a very real possibility that the Skrians are Dominion, uh, D Dominion agents with them themselves. Um, maybe they aren't exactly Dominion uh, agents themselves, but at the very least, they are Dominion sympathizers, and therefore they're giving aid and comfort to an enemy, or at least would if they were given the chance to. So they should probably be trained, to, uh, treated the same as Dominion militants. I mean, I won't push too hard on it, but they are a major security risk, uh, especially since at first, we weren't even able to understand them. So, we need to get them off Deep Space Nine as quickly as possible. Um, Bajor is completely within the rights to do whatever they need to protect their homeland. And, um, you know, they have their own problems to worry about. They have their own famine and stuff to worry about. So, they, they have no need to bring on any more weight to, to their problems. So... The Federation isn't responsible for it. The Federation needs to do what's best for its own security because these are possibly spies trying to undermine them. So send them away. The Bajorans have no obligation to take them in either. And uh, Iskarians, I don't know. They'll figure it out, hopefully. And that's that's me. So from my perspective, uh, just, give them, just give them the land, you know? Just give it to them. Who the fuck cares? You know, uh, the Bajorans aren't using it. You know, if the land's shitty and they'll make it fine, uh, give them the chance. If they uh, all die out because, you know, they can't, well, you know, at least it was an honest effort, and then we can try again later with a different refugee group. And uh, who gives a fuck if there's a famine going on right now? I mean, just buy more food. I mean, come on, this is a major destination because of the wormhole. Use it to our advantage, you know? And if we can't import more food because of uh, the plot, then, I mean, who cares? We'll deal with it. If, if a couple people lose some weight, I mean, I'm sure they're a bunch of fatties anyway. And, you know, these Koreans are uh, refugees from a foreign conqueror. 
we, I mean, that's kind of a big fucking deal. I mean, we probably need to start preparing for these foreign conquerors to come through these gates and start attacking uh, sooner rather than later. So we should prepare to draft all of these Koreans uh, to help fight, you know, Holy Crusade against these guys when they eventually come knocking on our door. And so to prepare for this, you know, we, we should assimilate the Koreans into a cast of warriors and farmers on that uh, peninsula. And, you know, really, that's just my perspective. Okay, then. That's a couple of, uh, well, okay, no, it's one absolutely insane proposal and one kind of interesting one, but uh, for my stance on this, I think that uh, Bejor should definitely welcome the screen. You know, they should do it with open arms and a plan to get them into the workforce as soon as they land. And, you know, the screen are clearly a large workforce that is ready to do hard, menial labor for the benefit the benefit of Bajor. They can be sold that land on the peninsula, uh, you know, given a loan to make sure they can pay for it. And, uh, you know, if they're successful, they'll contribute a lot of much-needed food to Bajor's economy. And, you know, that'll both help with the famine and give them an easy way to pay off their loans. You know, start gaining some other wealth for themselves. Um, as far as what the Federation or the Bajoran government should have to do with this, absolutely nothing. They're just going to muck up the whole process. You know, market forces will see the uh, Screens on that peninsula doing that good hard labor and pulling themselves up by their bootstraps. But as we saw in the episode, the Bajoran government just kind of steps in and says no. And, you know, they're just ruining this very profitable business venture that could have been undertaken but wasn't. You know, as a result, the Federation government should just stay out of it. All right. That's what I got. To- okay. Um, so a lot of suggestions so far. A lot of suggestions. Here's mine. Screen people are... They're basically destined to live on Bajor. From what we know about them, from their beliefs of having to come to this broken world, I would definitely say Bajor is that broken world. They've also suffered under the hands of a horrid overlord species going to their planet and hurting their people. The Skrians are here to help. From a Bajoran's perspective, I would even say they're sent from the prophets. They came through the wormhole, which is... uh, where they, the prophets reside. And these people are here to help Bajor and make the planet whole again. I think they definitely deserve to be on Bajor because they need a home. They're willing to help. They understand the consequences of coming on Bajor during this uh, famine. They've even said if we, the person who's leading the Screen said, if we starve, then we starve, basically. I think they definitely deserve to be on Bajor. I think both the Screens and the Bajorans would enjoy each other's company. I hope to see future where they could hold hand in hand looking at this prosperous world they built together. And that's essentially it. Just let them come. They're good people, and they want to help. Alrighty. Well, actually, Blink, I do have a question for you, as we've all yes. said our things. What if the Bajoran government says no screen need apply and just tells the screens to fuck off. I mean, this is another thing that Seven said, too, uh, that they should accept them, regardless of what the Bajoran government says. How do you intend to reconcile this? Do the Bajorans not have any say in the matter? or Because... I would say that the Bajoran government, despite what it wants, it doesn't seem like they're thinking in their best interests here. So, I don't care the Bajoran government what what has to say. These people need a home. Let's give them a home. Yeah. I mean, we shouldn't give them things. We wouldn't want to turn them into freeloaders or anything. But we should, you, you know, know give I, them the you know chance. What I mean. They want yeah, exactly. this land, this unoccupied land. Give them that unoccupied land. They'll build their homes on it. They'll farm on it. And they'll help heal this broken planet. Yeah, exactly. We need to give them a chance to buy that land so they can build their home, pull themselves oh, up no, the now they need to buy that land. 
Well, yeah, obviously. These people are coming in with nothing but the clothes on their backs and their broken down ships. What do you expect them to buy the land with? Well, that's why they can take out a loan. Which, you know, if they're successful farmers, as they claim to be, they'll be able to pay back before too long. That's that's a pretty bad idea. Also, they could pay back in labor. I mean, not that I'm for the screens coming on at all, but if they were, I mean, you just take their labor. Like, that seems like something that would work out okay. Yeah, you give them a loan, they use that labor to grow crops, and then they can pay off their loan with the crops they grew. Yeah. Like a way of like sharing oh, the crops yeah. that, they, they, that they grow, like a kind of sharecropping or something. I don't know. It seems like it would work out pretty well. You know, as much as I like uh, the idea of cropping a bunch of shares, uh, can you even own land? I mean, who the fuck owns this land to begin <laughs> with? I mean, buying land, honestly, that, that just sounds like uh, absolutely. If you want to be... If you want to be technical, uh, nobody really owns this land. You could just say they occupy it. They don't really own it. I think that's a good solution. See, but if they don't, how are they going to assert their claims to the produce they grow there? Because they're on the land. Well, what? that doesn't mean anything if they don't own it, though. Well, like, they if live it's not there. their land, they can't claim the spoils that the land produces. They live on that land. That's well, the claim. They're utilizing well, if they, li- they, can, if they, they can, live on they it can. and they don't own it, they're squatters, and that's, I'm pretty yeah. sure that's a crime. That is a crime. I agree uh, with Seven on this one. Squatters, okay. right? Uh, so you're saying, you're saying that they're squatters when they're uh, occupying unowned land? Is that what yes. you're saying? Well, no, it's well, not. It's, it's owned by the Bajoran government. I'm sure it's owned I mean, by it somebody on Bajor, right not, not the land. government. Well, no. I'm sure it, somebody... Any unclaimed land belongs to the, the state, I, I would say. Okay, so you're saying because it's uh, on Bajor, it belongs, and it's not coming by a private citizen, it belongs to uh, the Bajoran government? Yes, that's that's exactly what I'm saying. Okay, Wormy, I submit to you that if a indigenous people are not fully utilizing their land to the fullest extent humanly possible, other people have a right to occupy it and use it too. That's a pretty good point. I agree with him. Jesus fucking Christ. Wow, that's that's fucking <laughs> nuclear. That's that's I wasn't even gonna agree with that. Um God damn I mean I can it. I can kind of get behind that. Um I'm surprised you are, but I can kind of get behind, behind that, it in a, in a much I'm getting behind it in a much different way than he's wording it. Okay, go, go, go ahead, go I, ahead. I was trying it. to convince Wormy because that's that's such a bad take. That's such a terrible fucking take. I know <laughs> Wormy loves terrible takes. The, the way that I see it, the Bajoran <laughs> government, the Bajoran government is only denying that land because they don't want the screens there because of some uh, some ridiculous ideas that. Oh well, even though you said you don't want help, we'll still have to help you if something goes wrong. I think they just don't want these people here for uh, stupid reasons. I think the Bajorans aren't going to use it. Why not give it to people who need a home? I don't think I think you misunderstood Noku. Noku was basically saying that any government has the right to fuck over indigenous people because uh, we could. Oh, use he's saying in any scenario. Yeah, yes. no, that's. Oh, not, that's yeah, pretty, I, oh. I was literally trying to get wormy. <laughs> I didn't to, read it that way. I did not read it that you way. You're planning me to be a fucking monster, and uh, you just <laughs> jumped on it and you're like, "Nope, I'm the monster." I didn't. I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't read it like that at all. I, so, uh, would, I, would you like I to denounce that? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> no, I want to say, like, come on, even I want to denounce that statement, but I'll Jesus. just buy it, because, you know, I am a monster, and I'm going <laughs> to die. I live by the monster, and I'm going to die by the monster. You're a fucking menace. You're a beast. I mean, only one of us in this entire group has ever advocated for the nuking of a city. So okay, that was one time, and it was pretty cool because it, it was out of a it was out of a B fifty two little bomber. Okay, that was a pretty cool thing. You got to be completely honest. I mean, I think it's See, cool. the Search rule of cool does not factor into economics. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Except in the en- except in the entertainment. 
industry and say, yeah, a couple totally. of other small things but oh that's the thing we should have done we should have uh, we should have recorded it and then like sold dvds that's the solution of a different episode like, people, like like put out bleachers on the outskirts of the city you know <laughs> teach people how to like uh judge if they're within the radiation zone yeah you know make a field day out of it you could simultaneously Cold. run like experiments you could be like well if instead you're this far the... away from the uh blast zone this is what happens to you you, you can yeah, turn that's it what it's whole thing. instead of the splash zone we'll call it the blast zone we'll set up bleachers for people to get fried in that's <laughs> blankus you made your take wow. even worse <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can, we, can we not discuss past episodes where i've said horrible things can we focus on this one? okay <laughs> come on you guys always throw in my face that i might have advocated for the destruction of half of all life in like probably six or seven episodes, but you know. Okay, but you, that's your brand. That's a, if you don't mind me using that word, that's your brand of being a horrible person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. I, fine, I will be denouncing <laughs> my uh, statement that uh, colonization is okay when uh, good guys are doing it who have lots of uh, technology. <laughs> but I, I still feel like the, the point remains that uh, this is unused land that's not owned by anyone. I mean, owned by a government not even using it. I mean, well, I mean, what if the sure somebody has a stake on it. Somebody has a claim to it. They have to. The government does. The government by definition does. But also, I feel like we're over overlooking my perspective, which is set them back. Screen shouldn't be here at all. I know. No, bad idea. Shut up. But yeah, you have three... You have three million people all more than happy to do jobs a lot of other people probably don't want. Like, it's just bad economics to send them back. You know like, how long they could contribute so grow... much. Mm. Yeah, do you know how long it's going to take to grow th- three million extra people just naturally in Bajor? That's like, that's like a decade's worth of like growth, depending on how many right. people live exactly. in Right, exactly. I, I agree with you. Bajor could not handle so what you turbulence. want is and you, you know Bajor can handle them. These the screens themselves want to be there, do or die no matter what, and they're willing to help out. I say give them that chance. You're taking the screens at their word. For all we know, the screens are yes. the mini agents. I do that's that's a pretty ridiculous uh, little thing that you're saying there, and I do not appreciate it. I feel, I feel like uh, I feel like uh, Noku would support me in saying that they at least have sympathies towards the Dominion. You know, so no. uh, okay, actually, I was about to say like I do agree with the idea that uh, the Dominion is uh, dumb and bad, but I don't. I, I'm not sure that a group of refugees is inherently a uh, an active threat. But uh, I think I think Wormy is right that you know we we do need to make sure that nothing nefarious. Is going on. We need to make sure, sure that there are protections in place. You know, the only nefarious maybe thing we, going on maybe is we bug their conversations, or, or you know, maybe we uh, stifle some of their uh, less important freedoms. You know, to make sure that they're not doing anything foolish. You know, I, I can agree with that. Well, that's a given. I mean, if you're going to have people that you govern, they have to have some of their freedoms. Not taken away. So don't look at it like removing any type of freedoms. Just consolidated. Under the rug. No, it's consolidated. That sounds like a better word. Just, to say. Yeah, consolidated Christ. under the rug that we just swept it under. Yeah, and it's for it's for their own good. But so no one no one thinks that. It, if I understood the episode correctly, because I'm pretty sure they said this in the episode. They were under the, the domain of, like, some shitty Tigorians or some shit like that. I can't remember exactly what they were called. Some pretty but, bad people. Right, but the only pe- the only way that they were able to, like, escape subjugation was when the Dominion came, beat, beat, up, the, beat up the Tigorians, and um, also forced them away. But, like, don't you think that there's a problem? That they're like, well, you know, the Dominion, they really helped us out back there. Well, no, because if the Dominion were really interested in helping those people, they wouldn't have made them still leave. Well, the Dominion wasn't Think about it this way. The Dominion, the if the Dominion were interested in helping those people, the three million Screens would not be space refugees. They'd be on their home planet right now. I'm not saying that the, the Dominion wants to help the people. I'm saying that the Screens want to help the Dominion. How do we know no, that they don't? don't have secret because they, I mean, I don't. I don't think that. Uh, I don't think that took follows. Took their shit away too. 
I've heard from pretty good intel that <laughs> oh yeah who me he heard it from me I am Forbes <laughs> um, I am Forbes <laughs> you you've gotten it from reliable sources well okay okay so you're saying that they should be on Bajor yes absolutely one hundred percent. You're on That's Bajor. One option. One option, right? Okay, so seven. Me and seven are back on board again. Seven, you're you're my man now. So what's oh, I don't want to send them back. Uh, I definitely don't want to send them back. They are too valuable as a workforce to just send back. But like, the more the the more I think about it, the more I'm thinking that the solution they came up with in the episode is actually not the worst. You know, they gave them another pretty much uninhabited planet to go live on yeah, and farm on. Bad. I will, here, here's what I'm thinking. What if, in addition to that, you know, we uh, supplied them alone for some of some farm equipment that they could then use to, like, really grow a bunch of food there, and then we could just import a bunch of food from that planet back to Bajor. You no. know, it sounds like this planet is a lot more fertile than those uh, random lands on Bajor were, so they'd probably be able to grow a lot more food and be a lot more productive there. Which, you know, would benefit both them... But it would also form strong economic ties with Bajor and these people. You know, in time, that relationship could grow, and, you know, they would both benefit from it. That's not what I was thinking. You know... That's uh, that's another option I'm thinking. I mean, I I, I can appreciate a a good, not evil take from you for, like, the first time ever. But uh, at Uh, the same time, though, I don't think we should be growing too much food. I don't think we want... Too much food. Too much food Why not? can be a bad thing. So uh, you know, I, I just want to say, Noku and Blangus, you two were talking at the exact same time, and I couldn't understand a word of what you were saying there. Yeah, it's just you were saying this ridiculous thing that we can't grow too much food because no, too before much food that, is a bad thing. before that, I was trying to tell you that you're ridiculous, and the Screens are supposed to be on Bajor for the specific reason that they are supposed to go to a broken world to make it heal. I what? don't buy into any of that religious nonsense. That yeah. is stories passed down for generations by a bunch of people who may or may not have known something at the time, but trying to interpret that however many generations afterwards is just kind of pointless. So you know, I, d- I, get your, I mean, get I your religious as as explanations down, out of here. There. I think if it was written down, it's fine. You know, if, it, if someone wrote it down at some point, it's fine. I think I'll, I'll buy that religious nonsense. Okay, but they wrote about a broken planet however many centuries ago, and now they're coming here and thinking Only Bajor? A Only like two or three centuries ago. Well, so Bajor is totally did a broken not. planet. Yeah, but it only became broken recently. So yeah, like, and still, it still fulfills a prophecy. They are going to a broken planet to heal it, to make it better. Yes, because they somehow miraculously knew the future all the way back then. That's how prophecies literally, work, you dingles. Literally, prophecies work. They, they, they Not just yes, that. Yes, and prophecies are it. fake. Oh, no, think okay. about it. The they don't matter. Live, listen to me. The prophets live in the wormhole. We know this. And from a Bajoran's perspective, wouldn't it only make sense that the prophets sent these people to come and save their planet? I mean, the prophets are also stupid. <laughs> the religion and government mixing exist. into one. Eh, you're mi- they're mixing religion and government into one entity, and that's just always a terrible idea. You should minimize, okay, if not get rid of both. You're right, but listen. The prophets do, like, they do canonically exist. And they're yeah. and cool. they 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 understood what was going to happen. They knew the future because they live in nonlinear time. They sent them. Well, okay, so we have that's a lot of speculation on you that that I'm just not buying. But also, we don't we we don't know what the Bajoran people want. We we we're only hearing really from the Bajoran the Bajoran government. But we don't know what the Bajoran people themselves would have wanted. Not that it really matters to me. I think the Bajoran government has a right to speak for the people. But even if the Bajoran were to accept it, what if the Bajoran people didn't accept it? I think that's still a... Uh, it doesn't matter. They still deserve a home. Well, Seven, well, I mean, seven gave if a enough of the, alternative. Yeah, and if enough of the people don't want to sell them any land to farm on, they kind of can't go farm there. So They don't even own the land that they would be selling. 
The government owns it. I mean, I'm sure. I'm not sure I buy that. I I mean, I don't know. But yeah, fair enough. Well, in that case, then it only matters if the Bajoran government is willing to sell, which kind they of weird, are. But okay, but hear me out. What if we just ignore them because they're being assholes? You know, you know. I, I recognize that the Bajoran government has uh, made a decision, but. Seeing as it's a pretty stupid ass decision, I think we can just ignore it. Well, and if I, there's other people willing to sell their land, then yeah, sure, definitely they can go there. Okay, but think about this: Bajor is probably going to need like some awesome soldiers, you know, a class of soldiers to help uh, fight off when these conquerors come through that wormhole. Because you know, we know that they will come through that wormhole because that's what I don't like this do. idea either. Well, let, yeah. let, let, let that could go with it. I'm you know, I mean, think me. about it. You know, Bajor is a broken people. They lost a lot. Of, they lost a lot of uh, good, honest uh, people during the occupation. You know, their military is not up to snuff, and they need they need to bolster that. And you know, we got three million volunteers ready to help prepare them for you know this oncoming uh, onslaught that's probably going to happen any day now. Any minute. So I don't really like the idea of forcing all of these people into this kind of thing, but Agreed. definitely like make it an option for them. Like if they want to join the military, yeah, go right ahead. You can uh, sign them up in droves for all I care. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it does kind of need to be their they choice. Do it or we shoot them. That's an option. That is yeah. a choice. That is See, a choice. That's that's the government using violence though to try and force them into that. Decision. No, it should be they can either join the military or, you know, go work as farmers on this land that they bought purchased via a loan from some wealthy <laughs> businessmen. I still, uh, that that I seems like a perfectly reasonable choice to me. Devious. Or go okay. on to that other planet and farm there with a loan of like farm equipment from some wealthy businessman on Bajor. Yeah. Something it's like that. Insane. No cue. You know, give also, them actual choices. <laughs> sort of. I'm I'm sorry, you. That was, that was, that was a choice. I don't know. I don't know. What you're saying about they, they, they had the uh, radical freedom to either, <laughs> you know, either choose to die gloriously or choose to die like a coward. I mean, I don't, I don't see, I don't see what the, the problem is. Okay, now, Simon, I submit to you that this barren land on this peninsula has no market value, therefore, no owner. That, and if it has no owner because of its lack of market value, and these people want to utilize that land to increase its value, and worst case scenario, they, they like all like starve to death. I mean, is that really that much much of a economic risk? I mean, the very fact that they want to go there shows that the land has some kind of market value. So, like, your whole no, premise is at least a little bit off. But well, they want to go there because they're religious fundamentalists who think that they're going to cure the land. That still that still gives it a value because value mm -hmm. is derived from uh, demand and supply. So if there well, is value demand, is derived from the amount of labor hours you know that is produced for a product. Oh uh, no, because no, the land it's, exists. It's, okay. Yeah, the land exists. There's plenty of supply, and now that these people want it, there's clearly some demand. So there's there's some value for it. Admittedly, probably not a much, uh, yeah, probably not very much if it is barren and not being used, but. Because they want okay, it, it so has we, value. So we have one purchaser, uh, attempted purchaser of, of of this land, and no other. Uh, that's and... a monopsoly. Is that what it's called? A monopsoly? A mo uh, monopsoly? monopsoly? What? <laughs> it's like the opposite of a monopoly. What's this shit? I, I... okay, Simon. Is he seeing a real thing right now? Because I feel like he's not. I feel like he just wanted to make a word up because that doesn't sound real. No, it, my, monopsoly. <sighs> There, it is a real word. Masanasapoli. Okay, so my Obviously. point is, if there are no other customers... Oh, mono monopsony? Monopsony, there we go. That's the thing I was saying. Yeah, you did I, not say that at all. You said yeah, that's you said monopoly, but you just put an s at the end of it. So it was monopoly. Monopoly. Close enough. I, but my counter argument to something was monopsony. So yeah, yeah. It's also not exactly a monopsony. Um, well, it kind of is. Well, so a monopsony is more when 
a single buyer controls the market as opposed to a single seller, which is a monopoly. And in this case, there's uh, a lot of buyers and, or, I mean, depending on how you want to classify the screen people, it's I would, it I would kind of wonky, but I regardless, they don't, even so, they don't control the market. So they, it's, it's very inaccurate to call them a monopsony. So? I mean, I feel like they're forming an economic block, uh, block that is the only uh, current attempt uh, at buying this land. I mean, I guess you could reason out that, you know, save it for a uh, later date for a more uh, honorable and worthy uh, customer. But so, that's very far in the future. And, you know, a, a, as any uh, financial economics uh, thing will tell you, money loses its value basically like every like five years anyway. So. You know, present you know present money is better than future money. That was a massive exaggeration there, but not entirely inaccurate. I mean, okay, ass- assuming you have a MIRR of like ten percent. So the monopsony, this would not be a monopsony because there is no need for the Bajoran government to sell the land. If the Bajoran government did have a need to sell the land, uh, I think it would be a monopsony. Yeah. How do you spell it, that? I'm trying really hard. Mono P S O N Y. Um True Centris Podcast is also the reading rainbow. We're learning new words every day. Wait, but um so, there was something else that, that came up. Noku, you said we have to prepare for the invasion that's coming through at any moment. I yeah, posit literally. to you. What if this is the invasion? I mean, these are pretty shitty warriors. Maybe we should train them up, give them weapons, so the battle that they're about to do on onto us will be at least worthy for the history book. Yeah, that's a, that's <laughs> that's probably that's the worst fucking thing I've ever heard. These are absolutely not invading peoples. They just want a home. They just want a farm. So that then they could farm, and just relax, dude. Do you know what like farmers use a lot? Scythes and pitchforks. Those are those okay, are pretty deadly they, weapons. They would be going up against a government which has the home field advantage in every single way and has guns, bombs, the Federation. I mean, it's pretty obvious to see who would win. A, a few, because not all of them would be fighting because most of these people are families. It's like old people and children, which don't fight typically. So oh. you'd, you'd have at most, like, probably 100,000 out of the 3 million, at the very most, fighting and killing. And they're using farm tools. Meanwhile, there's, like, probably a few billion Bajorans who have actual weapons. This is the shittiest invasion of all time. Hey, we want to help feed you. That's not an invasion. What if they poison the food, huh? I mean, I, I looked it up. There's about How? four billion Bajorans. I mean, I really, I, I feel like. Uh, How many Bajorans are there? Like about four billion, according to. Uh, oh Jesus! Okay. Well, uh, four Sci-Fi billion. Stack, uh, that cites uh, the Star Trek uh, factoid handbook. Oh, cool! I'll I will link that in the description somewhere. Okay. But, well, uh, how about this? There's four billion of them, and there's three million screens. I think these three million screens. It's not going to put that much of a dent into the amount of people who are getting fed if there's already 4 billion fucking Bajorans on the planet. See, but we shouldn't just feeding them for no good reason. We're, feed- we're not just feeding them for no good reason. They're feeding themselves. They, okay, they, yeah, they, and if they can successfully farming. do that, you know, it, that's fine. Sure. And if they can't successfully do that, the screens, the, the leader of the screens themselves said Honey. that they're okay with starving because their their whole point is to not be a burden, but to be the opposite. Okay, I can actually kind of get behind that. People and who it, aren't going to turn into uh, useless freeloaders. So you're okay with their religious beliefs if it means that you won't have to help them? I mean, I don't yeah. much care whether their religious <laughs> beliefs or not, as long as they, you know, are willing to do the work and either pull themselves up by their bootstraps or die trying. Whether that's a religious belief, a cultural belief, or just a personal belief, doesn't really fucking matter. 
That's that's fair. Also, Blingus, you understand that you can just like believe whatever is convenient to you. That's what I do all the time. I just like <laughs> choose the fucking course you do. <laughs> I'm just saying you don't like you can just choose things like pick and choose things that that are like convenient for you to believe. It's not no, that's not how I operate. That's how you operate. You absolute goofus. But it saw worked. that last episode. No, it didn't work. It made you look like a horrible person. Not as bad I as mean, no it doesn't doing. just it doesn't just make him look like a horrible person. It kind of <laughs> makes him a horrible it person. Makes him a horrible person. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I feel like uh, Wormy is just a terrible guy, and the three other of us are just like good people. Am I right? No, you. I'm guy. taking you down with me. If I if I'm being a bad guy, I'm dragging you down with me. I can't name a single time I even thought of a bad thing. Do you want to mean... kill half the population, but you didn't want to double all the food? <laughs> yeah, because I'm not a fucking moron. What do you mean? That would have made people so happy. Maximizing okay, can happiness we... is not the meaning of life. We can't can... keep discussing this every episode. We can't always talk about <laughs> yeah. it. Okay, it's fucking funny. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we, we totally can. And actually, the way the timing is working on this episode, it, it's it's fine so far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so I, I do want to hear more about this alternative that you suggested, Seven. Basically, you want them to still be tied to Bajorans even if they are living on the other planet that they are forced to live on? I mean, they aren't, ne they aren't necessarily forced to live there. I'm just saying that if the Bajoran government or nobody else is willing to sell them land on Bajor to work, then it's probably a good idea for them to go to this other planet that presumably has more arable land on it, and so they can, you know, be more productive. And then, you know, through some uh, loaned-out high-tech farm equipment, they'll be even more productive. And, you know, they can start trading that food back to Bajor to pay off their loans and just generate capital. No. You know, all in all, this will make a nice, strong economic union between these two planets uh, that'll facilitate trade and just a large growth of wealth. And, you know, over time, maybe some Bajorans will want to move there and some Screens will want to move back to Bajor and, you know, just facilitate more trade and the movement of uh, goods and people for the benefit of the economy. Now, I posit to you, Seven, that the Screens will take the loans, and they will use the loans to make food. However, I don't think they're going to let go of the fact that the Bajorans did not allow them on their land. How will we enforce the Screens to pay back the Bajorans? Because I'm seeing right now what you're saying sounds very idealistic. But well, if I, I mean, here's, Screens, here's the I thing. That advanced farming equipment isn't going to work without continued, you know, supplies from Bajor. So if they aren't willing to pay back their loan, and they're not going to get any more of that farm equipment. Is and this going to be? Like, they're going to start suffering. Is this going to be like the, the that John Deere equipment that's coming out now, where it has like a computer in it? You need to fucking pay a monthly subscription to farm. You I mean, that is one. That? that that is one possible way to make sure they don't renegade on their loan. Honestly, it, it just makes good economic sense to start paying back that loan so that they can then start generating capital and trading with the relative superpower that is Bajor. You know, it's just to the benefit of their economy to do so, and it's to the benefit of the Bajoran economy to help them get started so that they can reap the dividends later on. I don't think the Bajorans are a superpower. I mean, for God's sake, they can't even... Com you know, compared, to three million, compared to three million refugees... On a planet with no infrastructure, yeah, they're a relative superpower. They can't even absorb three million refugees. How, what kind of superpower is that? Yes, they absolutely can. Their reasons for denying them were poo-poo. So, still ends up the same. So it means they can, they can absorb them. They just had really bad reasons. There's no proof that they could absorb them. I think yes, that what you're talking Blank about, Kevin, is setting up a war. The Screens will go to war, the Bajorans. What the How hell? the hell is Sep setting up an economic what? union equivalent setting up for a war? He's not smart, that's how. Well, because the economy might get, like, so the Bajorans are about to face. Wait, this is something I want to talk to Noku about, too. The Bajorans are facing a famine currently. They will need more food. And 
they will need some kind of outside help. I am very against the Federation giving them any help. The Federation has helped them enough at this point. Um, they have to kind of help themselves at this point. Where are they going to be getting these resources? Noku, where are they getting these resources for the food that you said that they should just get more of? I mean, they're they're literally a major trade destination. They have land. I mean, I don't know. They, they, I mean, I'm sure they could think of something if they tried really hard, you know. Maybe they could rent some of their land out to uh, prospectors. They have an entire fucking unoccupied peninsula just sitting there. I'm sure there's some rich asshole that would just love to ha- have a piece of that, you know. Rent it out, or, I don't know, maybe sell some of their resources, or you know, something that, uh, you know, I, I think they should just be a little bit smarter about it. Like, they don't even have to get their food from the F- uh, Federation. Maybe they should, uh, you know, get it from the Romulans or the Klingons or something. I mean, I'm just saying right now they're being bad and dumb and they have an obligation to try, you know, a little bit harder. What, whether or not that's trading, renting, mining, giving a plot of land to religious zealots. You know, if they want to, they can do it. I I don't know if they could, though, but, you know, they also have to keep in mind, I do think part of the Bajoran's hesitancy in giving the Screens land is that they're worried about another Cardassian-type situation, you know, in which they're like, oh, well, just, we're just here to help you out. We're just here to chill. You know, just here to chill. And uh, 60 years worth of violent oppression later, they weren't just there to chill. They were there to do bad things. Are you attempting to insinuate that these three million uh, refugees are not real uh, refugees? That, that, that's that, exactly that, that, they're, that they're the invaders. That's exactly. Well, I literally what been, I've literally been saying that. that. No, but, I, but I'm saying like, like, like I don't mean like, and I'm saying like that, that, that the Dominion aren't the real conquerors, but it's the Koreans who are the real conquerors. Could be. Do, have we heard from the Dominion recently? Yes, we've I heard mean, from them. I mean, technically, in world, this is the first time the Federation officially hears about them. So we don't even so, know the Dominion exists. I think it's actually technically the second or third time. Well, it's the second time it's mentioned, but it's the first time the Federation hears about it. There's like one other time earlier in the show where they mention it, but it's... yeah, because I know I, at least I know that the Ferengi have some relationship with the Dominion. Run VR. Sneaky little bastard to. Uh, what if the Dominion don't it? exist? It's just screens. No, they definitely exist. No, I mean that, that's true. Maybe, maybe we, maybe we do need to think about this. Maybe when no. we put them on this peninsula, we just have like a nuke, like pointed like right at it. It'd be like something bad happens. If three more million uh, screens show up, you know, bim, bam, boom. Uh, that peninsula just became a glass making factory. That is the worst goddamn thing that you've ever said. That is your worst idea I yet. I don't think that's the worst thing I've even said this <laughs> yes. episode. It really <laughs> isn't the worst thing you've said this episode. I mean Well yes, let's just let's just have a nuclear device permanently permanently on hand, ready to detonate 24-7, just in case one of them blinks the wrong way. Just fucking glass an entire continent. I mean, that is a hell of a lot better than, okay, let's just appropriate native land whenever the fuck we feel like it because we think they aren't utilizing it properly. That is true, and that's your take. That's your take. Is that No, you know, take, it isn't. I know. You got tricked to this. You got tricked to this. <laughs> you're going to make me seem like a bad person. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yeah, it really sucks. That I, was trying to, I, was re- I was trying really hard to uh, trick uh, Wormy into falling in there. And <laughs> you just jumped right in front. Of, you tried to throw me under the bus, but you, you, uh, Bling has just jumped right in front of the bus for me. So thanks. Uh, fucking for that. fucking side Bling tackle. Died for your sins. <laughs> well, so I there's two we- options we have as far as negotiation here. We have. I, I'm feeling like my suggestion of just kick them all out is not able. That's never going to work, because it's a ridiculous suggestion. Well, I mean, I can agree with them that we can't just, like, give them the stuff and then, you know, 
Yes, we can. Make sure, you know, and, and then, like, forget about it. You know, we have to make sure that they aren't a threat for a later point. And we have to they won't be they a are. threat. There's only but, three million of them. But there might be more coming. I mean, uh, Wormy we're, we're, might be right about that. Maybe there's, like, a, you know, like no. a railroad of them coming, you know? It's like, maybe <laughs> they're the real conquerors. They are, this is the worst fucking... I mean, no. No. It, if more oh, no, and more cheap labor land, wants to come need, in, we need to prepare. We don't. Right. We, we aren't a threat. They're just farmers. Wait, wait. What we, if we, we just got rid of these three million and see if another three million came? Yeah, well, like, that okay, is a horrible idea. Like, yes, okay, Bussy, I'm not agreeing with that statement. I'm distancing myself from uh, Wormy's hot take there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what if they're just fucking liars? Well, they aren't yeah. lying. You don't know we that. Could see, we could see the blood, sweat, and tears in their eyes as we're talking to them. And they're telling us about the horrible things that have happened to them. And how they finally found their home. Their their homeland to come to and fix. What if they're, this is like, their entire species' goal. And, and, that's and a it's pretty their sad goal. Species, right? What? It's their entire species, right? That they're there? Yeah, it's only three million of, of them. Yeah, all okay. Species. So we give them a land, and if I don't know, a, a couple more million show up out of nowhere, then we know they're fucking liars. Bam, bam, boom. It, uh, Bajor has a new fucking uh, industry hey, to fine, make but money guess off. What? Of. Guess what? There's not going to be another three million, so it doesn't even matter. Even you if you do this, me, it doesn't matter. Me that, we, that, that we can have the nukes ready to go because it doesn't matter. How about this? No, I mean, that's, no, that's kind of a because, waste. To yeah, I it's mean, a waste of material. It's not, and okay, it's, it doesn't have to be like a literal nuke. I mean, it could be a, it could be a space laser because you know they have a shit ton of those all okay, the well, time. Here's, here's the issue with this. Okay, there is a, there's a group of people on Bajor who called the Circle. They wanted to be just for Bajorans, and they're crazy people. What if they get access to the nuke? They're like, ooh, a nuke aimed at the at the Screens. How about we press this little button here? What are you gonna do then? I mean, they are. I mean, that, that nuke, forget the nuke already exists. I mean, uh, Deep Space Nine literally has like a. I don't know if they have a, if a, a nuclear arsenal, but they have torpedoes and later lasers that I'm sure they could glass. They could blast an entire planet if they wanted to. Deep Space Nine, that station could destroy all of Bajor if it wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, your, I think your point is uh, invalid there. That. Having something pointed at the uh, the people is is that much of an additional threat since there's already something pointed there. Well, no, okay, so no. real here. clear. The okay, Federation... so Noku, here you just solved my problem. Why do we need nukes pointed at them if this station could blow up the entire planet? I was being metaphorical about the about the like nuke literally hanging over them. You know, saying yeah. like we make a deal, saying like, hey, you know that you know you can stay here, but just know that if uh, you step out of line, you step you out of line. Get it. Uh, I can't be too threat. sure with your solution. Some you people have suggested some crazy shit. I thought you were being serious about a literal nuke on a string <laughs> hanging above their goddamn makes, continent. Come on, me come up with a ridiculous crazy solution. <laughs> yes. like, I mean, having yes. a nuke <laughs> it, tied to a in string Noku's, from what, like a Noku. flagpole. Come on, <laughs> give me a little more credit. You suggested, yeah, you suggested no, in, some pretty wait, wait, terrible, let, let, pretty terrible ideas. Talk. I was just going to say that in Noku's defense, the only person here who has actually advocated for nuking a civilian <laughs> population before is Blankus. That so, was once! Was cool. yeah, but you're still the only one who's actually done it. They killed half the universe! Yeah, only all three of you did. Weapons. We were doing this with weapons. It's, it's the posturing that matters. Um... Noku, my only issue with your suggestion is that the Federation has no obligation to help Bajor. A matter of fact, they should not uh, be connecting with Bajor. Space is a Bajoran station. What? No, it isn't. Is it? Yes, it is. It's actually, if you want to be uh, technical, it's a Cardassian station retrofitted by the Federation to be used by Bajoran and Federation members. And it's not even fully it's not even fully redone because there are uh, well, no, and what I mean is that it, it belongs it belongs to the Federation. No, yes. it's owned by it's it's owned by the Bajoran government. It's, it's owned by the Bajorans the and there's a Federation emissary, I believe. 
Oh. Oh, it's. But the, but the Federation does command the station. To be fair. Yeah, basically, they're releasing it out as like a temporary military base. I, could, I guess you could say like it'd be like an analog for just like giving like a a building or slash like half a town to the American for your country. It's an embassy. And you, and you have like the right to like kick them out any time. Uh, embassy doesn't quite fit. It's more like having a military base in a foreign country. Hmm. Which look at the United States for precedence. We got lots of those. We got a whole bunch of those things. And, you know, we all know that, that the the, Fed, the Federation are just a legal continuation of the United States. Are they? I thought they were like a NATO. It, it's really hard. Uh, uh, from looking at the lore, it's kind of hard to decide because, you know, in the original series, they were pretty heavy-handed on, like, um, uh, America... Like Hua, you know, at one point Captain Kirk just recites the pledges, pledges of allegiance and the uh, American preamble. Even though Captain Kirk, you know, obviously yeah, America hadn't existed America. for like centuries at that point. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, either way, I was wrong about the lore. Big cringe on me. Um, you are big cringe. Thank you for admitting it. But what if we removed the resources? Okay, well, well, we should start trying to, to to come to the conclusion. So none of us are for just getting rid of all the Bajorans? Uh, Absolutely not. <laughs> We're not <laughs> oh, wait, 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 hold on. Kill all the Bajorans? I think we, that might be a little bit amendable here. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I was going for. I, I meant to say Screens. So we're not oh, over That's this. a bit bigoted. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty bad of you. You're already calling them evaders, you fuck. Fuck you. Possible. <laughs> even probable. Anyways, yes, we have all agreed that we are not just going to kick them out. Fair enough. I'll take the L on that one. I say we give them the land. Just give okay. it to them. So, but, but even uh, so, are you willing to use Federation force to enforce the Bajoran government to accept the Shreans? No. It should um, be the mar- the market forces will do it as long as big government doesn't stick their greedy little fingers into it and ruin the whole thing. I would say I would like it if the Federation made sure that the Bajorans uh, gave them the land that the Bajorans aren't even using anyways. Based? I'm okay with that. Disgust I mean, me. We can, I mean, we can like have some protection protections for like the Bajoran government. Like, say, like have a contract saying, like, hey, if your people are starving to death because of the famine we warned you about, Bajor has no obligation to help you out. Yeah, the screens already agree with that. So, yeah. This is something I was thinking of. If the famine gets out of hand and acknowledging that Noku lives in a fantasy world where you can just make money out of nothing. uh, My point is, Bajor has resources that it can lend, loan, or sell to people. What if they don't want to? The government has no obligation to do that. The government has the right to its own autonomy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true. The they, people it has will the right see to people starve to death. I'm perfectly fine with that. Yes, but the people will see the clear money making opportunity of loaning farm equipment and or land to these people, so that they can then produce a bunch of food, and then the Bajoran businessmen will make the profit off of that. I like that idea uh, only because I just thought we could have a, in the interests of bringing species together, we could probably have like a. There was at one time that Quark actually helped bring some, uh, so was it Quark or Nagus? They brought like nitrite to Bajor to help with farming. If he can bring more of that and some more farm equipment, then it'd be cool. Only because I think Quark deserves to get something out of this. Oh, yeah. If Quark, say, uh, if he's not doing it for free as long as he's getting paid, I think that's okay. Well, well, yeah, yeah, I just agree that course. Quark needs some extra pocket care. <laughs> Quark needs to get as much money out of this as possible. That's the priority. Okay. We're, we're good. Mean, they, they can all be making a lot of money out of this. And if, you know, some good businessmen find a way to, like, import cheap farm equipment or supplies, yeah. They, they'll, also be sh- they'll also be taking in some of that profit. So, forcing Bezor to accept the screens is where we're kind of sitting at right now. Yeah, yes, but we, but we can put must. some conditions on it. 
put some conditions on it. I I do agree. The conditions with that. are well, this the is my condition. Except that if they starve, that they will starve because that's kind of their religion. They just yeah. they don't want to be a baby. And if the Screans all you know die because of starvation and the famine's still a thing, I mean, you can't let you know the bodies go to waste necessarily. I feel like we kind of have. God damn it! <laughs> Poor me. You gonna eat them? No, I would eat them. I'm not in Bajor. But <laughs> the Bajorans, uh, maybe they should eat them before they starve to death themselves. All I'm saying is that we shouldn't let you know a whole planet of dead people become a thing when you could have a planet full of three million dead people and the rest of them are oh. eating meat. It's like that fucking Twilight episode where the aliens come and they're like, we're here to serve you, but they mean it literally to start eating people. Yeah. That's all I'm thinking about. Yeah, those and they were the good guys in that episode. I mean, were they? We can talk about that another time. That's a good episode to discuss. Okay. Um. Well, I'm I'm saying that we have to have something very real in place, and I think Noku agrees that we have something that have, have to have something real in place, and that something real is if this famine gets bad, the screens are the first to be eaten. <laughs> That's bad. That's, that's literally the same. That's Noku said that verbatim, probably. I mean, yeah, sure. If there ends up being a market for uh, meat, I, I suppose it would be well within someone's. You know, if they had, they were able to collect uh, and properly process it in a safe way. I, I and there was a market for it. I guess. Absolutely ridiculous, I mean, but I will accept only because it's it sounds funny. So let's uh let's <laughs> uh, <laughs> so if There's a market for it. It will be done. That's a terrible a idea. It's kind of funny. So we'll we'll agree to it. <laughs> <laughs> Most face take. I mean, I guess for me to be logically consistent, you know, from previous episodes, I have to I can't be opposed to cannibalism. No, you can't be. Also, and it's I, not I, cannibalism. You, you the, the screens and the majors are different. Yeah, Animal. exactly. <laughs> it's like it's what the meat industry know. does. Yeah, why are you being so upset? Yeah, you it's like people eating dolphins or great apes. Maybe I don't quite know how similar <laughs> they are. <laughs> or maybe great apes eating, eating people. I'm not sure which great way it would go. Eating dolphins. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> A dolphin. So to re- we need we need a recap. Um, yeah, you go ahead and recap. The Federation forces the Bajoran government to take on these people. Uh, Quark manages most of the farming equipment because he needs some good profit. He should get some out of this. If the screens are starving, and let's say if a screen is like near death and there's no chance of not starving, we we make an awesome screen BBQ. We invite, we invite a couple Bajorans over to the village and we just eat them because it's fun. And uh, that seems about it. <laughs> Man. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Um, uh, right. Uh, and, and, <laughs> compromise. Okay, and, and one additional thing. Make sure that we have a literal nuke uh, like like off like, a, like, like, like off like a fucking flat, like flagpole that's just like attached to like, like, like a fish wire. <laughs> So yeah, we, we, need, we, need that. We, we need like an acme, an acme, like a ten-ton steel bar just hanging above them. You're <laughs> just gonna crush all the land. <laughs> <laughs> Not even just like literally get a big ass anvil crush it. Oh, it's a big anvil. Says a hundred tons. That that seems very excessive. How about we have a symbolic anvil hanging somewhere as I like a reminder see. of the much yeah. more realistic threat of uh, okay, so it, is a nuke. it is a nuke but it says a hundred tons on it it says acme core on the side as long as, as, as there is either a, a metaphorical or a literal threat hanging above their head <laughs> yeah that's good also <laughs> if more show up that's when we drop it right is that when we drop it no yeah that's when we drop it if like three million more show up and say like hey you know Remember if, how if the our entire species no. is here? Well, actually, <laughs> here's three million more out of nowhere. If screens I mean, if, like, show if, like, up, but only if they're armed, show off, we're not going to kill them. But like, only yeah. if they're armed. Only if they're armed. Oh, we got if they're armed. Maybe if, I don't know. If, if, 
they have actual weapons, not just if, farm if equipment. They are clearly trying to do an invasion. If there's, if there's 50 million screens coming through the wormhole with phasers and warships, then barbecue. I mean, I don't like it, but it's uh, barbecue. Yeah. We should, we should definitely. That's my, that's my solution to conflict. Always, if soldiers start showing up, we bomb their civilians. I mean, that just makes sense. That's Jesus definitely Christ, gonna be, Plagueis. That's going to be a quality. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that's your solution. That's what you guys are doing here. That's you guys are like, oh yeah, more show up, then we can just kill them, right? That's what you're saying. I no, expect that kind of saying. shit from Wormy and Noku, but why are no, you just that, going along is, with it? That is literally what they're <laughs> saying. They're saying if more show up through the wormhole, the nuke gets dropped and a bunch of people die. Yeah, that is literally monster. their solution. <laughs> yeah, but we didn't, we, didn't say, like, we didn't explicitly say it, though. That's the thing. You gotta, <laughs> I'm explicitly yeah. saying it. So, okay, so Seven, you're mad at me because I'm saying the quiet part out loud. I'm saying exactly what they're suggesting, and I'm letting you hear it. Don't make us sound bad, though. That's the well, thing. I can't make my part out loud. I mean, am I on mute here or something? I mean, come on. I'm no, we're just ignoring you. We usually ignore you. You understand that? Oh, my God. I mean, true. Someone needs to ignore this me. This is probably the worst <laughs> solution we've ever come to. Just No, no, it isn't. And I can't help but bring up, once again, the nuke. The actual nuking. Was, oh, yeah. That was or, or, the, or, or the quarter of the entire universe. Uh, How many times have you mentioned that this episode so far? Holy fuck. Too many oh, times. Oh, but it's okay. Many times. Many times this episode would be like 20 minutes long. Yes, true. <laughs> <laughs> we need to build upon our... But I'm going to write that. If soldiers attack, we bomb their civilians. We th- How about we threaten it at first to make sure that they don't? We're like, oh, hey... If, uh, if we, we give have, them a we warning. Have... I'm okay with giving them a warning. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, I think that's, that's our... That's, uh, that's today's episode and today's conclusion to this big brain battle that we've just been having. Um, I wouldn't even call it a brain battle. It's just like an all-sided aneurysm. Everyone's getting one. (laughs) (laughs) But that being said, we will reintroduce ourselves uh, before signing off. I am Wormy. I am Noku. Seven. Blangus. And uh, check us out on Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, YouTube or ever else you can find uh, podcasts. Follow us on the Twitter. Don't, don't, don't actually follow us. Uh, that that's follow the us episode. On Twitter, look, can we get fifty thousand followers? Yeah. What's, what's do that? we even have a Twitter? I, I do. Think yeah. We did. Yeah, I have a Twitter. Oh God, why? So I can tweet at Joe Rogan. Ugh. Did I tweet at Johnny Ross? I feel like I might have. <laughs>